Before we proceed with the lesson, don't forget to click the subscribe button as a support for this channel. Our lesson for today is all about the residential zone. Residential is a zoning classification in which single-family dwellings and other type of dwelling units predominate. Occupancy classification under the National Building Code is Group A. Divisions A1 Residential building or structure for exclusive use of single-family occupants. A2, residential building for the exclusive use of non-leasing occupants not exceeding 10 persons. Residential is to density. The residential zone includes R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. So what are these residential zone? Let's discuss further. R1, low density single detached, no firewalls, the most restrictive residential zone. So dito, makikita mo yung single family dwelling, yung mga bungalow and other standard or the basic dwelling units. R2 The characteristic of R2 is medium density single attach, duplex, and the R2 has subzone, which is basic R2 that features until 3 stories, and the maximum R2 which features until 5 stories. R3. The characteristic of an R3 zone is high density, low rise, medium rise, multi-family dwelling. The subzone of R3 is basic R3, which features 1 to 3 stories, and the maximum R3, which features 6 to 12 stories. In here, you can find row houses as type of dwelling units. In R4, the characteristics are medium to high density, it, and in here, you can see townhouses. It's also a multi-family dwelling and it has no subsumes. The R5 is a very high density, medium to high rise and in here condominiums are found. It's also multifamily dwellings. Now let's go to the definition of terms. Wall. A structural element used to divide or enclose and in building construction to form the periphery of a room or a building. May ibat ibang class in wall. What are those? Load-bearing wall, a wall which supports any load other than its own weight. Non-load-bearing wall, a wall which supports no load other than its own weight. Cross wall, a term which may be used synonymously with a partition. A curtain wall, the enclosing wall of an iron or steel framework or the non-bearing portion of an enclosing wall between piers. Dead wall, a wall without openings. A parapet wall is that part of any wall entirely above the roof line. A party wall, a wall separating two or more buildings and using common body said buildings. Foundation wall, that portion of an enclosing wall below the first tier of floor joists. And a retaining wall is any wall used to resist the lateral displacement of any material, a subsurface wall built to resist the lateral pressure of internal loads. What about abutment wall? A form of semi-permanent or permanent structure constructed along a property line usually of masonry or reinforced concrete or other fire-rated material. Maximum height of 3.2 meters, 1.5 meters is solid, 1.7 meters with openings. Maximum length is 7 meters or not exceeding 50%. Firewall A reinforced masonry or reinforced concrete separator with appropriate fire-resistive rating and which shall be positions between dwelling units or between building structures to maintain fire integrity of each building or structure. 
Usually, ang construction ng isang firewall is purong buhos. Road right of way or the RROW. A kind of public open space for the continuous flow of pedestrian and vehicular traffic that must be free from all forms of prohibited physical obstructions. Firewall provisions. For R1, no firewall. For R2, one side. 80% of total side. R3, two sides, either both sides or side plus rear. And the maximum length, not more than 85% of total side or 65% of the perimeter. Maximum height is up to two stories. The residential project planning considerations. What are the planning considerations when dealing with a residential project? First, you should analyze the problem, read the project brief carefully, identify the objectives, identify the given requirements, and make a SWOT analysis which is also related to the next process which is the site analysis. In here, you're going to identify the sun path, the wind path, the orientation, the recesses, and views. You need to determine the strength of the lot, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats that might affect your project. You also need to consider Amihan, Habagat, Sunrise, and the Sunset. Development Controls Apply the minimum development requirements mandated by PD 1096 or the National Building Code of the Philippines. In here, you are going to deal with setbacks, AMBF, PSO, TOSL, USA, and the ISA. Setback The horizontal distance measured 90 degrees from the outermost face of the building or structure to the property line. In the figure, setbacks is represented by the green area. Allowable maximum building footprint or the AMBF is the maximum portion of the lot that may be occupied by the building or structure at grade level after satisfying setback, yard, and court requirement. In the figure, AMBF is represented by the white area. Maximum allowable construction area or the MACA is the combined total of the maximum allowable percentage of site occupancy and the maximum allowable impervious surface area or the ESA. Space Planning Every plan begins with a bubble diagram or a sketch or the schematic phase. So what are the considerations in doing the plan? Number one is distribution of the area. Number two is the circulation. Number three is light and ventilation. This is very important. You need to consider natural light going into your building and a natural ventilation going into your building. Sizes, areas, and shapes. You need also to consider the orientation, which part is exposed to the afternoon sun, and which part is exposed to Amihan and Habagat winds. You should consider zoning laws, the height, utilities which includes electrical, mechanical, plumbing. You also need to consider the structural component of your building, locations of doors and windows, and superstition and feng shui. In the Philippine construction industry, superstition and feng shui is considered. This may affect the planning of the residential unit. You should consider the aura plata mata in your stairs. Consider the positioning of doors and the orientation of your rooms and other superstitions and feng shui practices. Anthropometrics. Anthropometrics is the comparative study of the measurements and capabilities of the human body the underlying principle of anthropometrics is that building design should adapt to suit the human body rather than people having to adapt to suit the buildings. So dapat yung plano mo ay nakadesign sa measurement ng gagamit at hindi yung gagamit yung mag adjust dun sa plan mo or yung sa design mo. The triad. In doing your plan or your design, you should consider the triad, which is 
Venus Tash that features aesthetic, look, delight, order, proportion. Firmitas, firmness or structural. Utilitas, function, purpose or the use. A beautiful architecture or a beautiful design has the following factors. Venustas, Firmitas, and Utilitas. Residential Components Carport versus Garage A carport is open at least two sides, whereas a garage is a building or portion thereof in which a motor vehicle containing gasoline, distillate, or other volatile, flammable liquid in its tank is sorted, repaired, or kept, enclosed space. So, ang garage is typical sa mga US homes in which roll up yung door niya and close. While yung carport is typical in the Philippines which is may roof lang siya and then open in some sides. Room versus area. A room is typically enclosed space while an area is an open space. NGL versus established grade. NGL natural grade line or the undisturbed grade of the soil. While the established grade is final grade of the site conforming to plan. Dito, may nangyari ng excavation, filling, and backfilling. While the NGL is the undisturbed or yung existing condition or the natural condition of the soil or the lot. Porch versus foyer. The porch is a room or gallery located in front of an entrance of a building, while a foyer is described as space that usually connects the entrance to various other rooms. So, para siyang lobby ng bahay. Well, the vestibule is another term and the patio. A vestibule is a passage hall or room between the outer door and the interior of a building while a patio is, represents a living space outside your house, either a proper garden or a simple relaxing area covered or uncovered. What is the difference between a balcony and a terrace? A balcony is a platform on the outside of a building enclosed by walls or balustrades supported by columns or console bracket. Usually cantilever space ito, while the terrace is bigger than a balcony and has a roof covering. So ang balcony mas maliit kaysa sa terrace at anong terrace ay may covering sa taas or a roof covering. While a balcony can be an open space, enclosed, just, just enclosed by railings or balustrades. Lanai versus Veranda. A lanai is a type of porch comes from Hawaii and it's sometimes found in areas with warm climates. It has a roof and can also have walls but it's also open to the elements on at least one side. A veranda is a roof platform around the house. Toilet and bath versus powder room. Toilet and bath is a room containing a bathtub or shower and usually a lavatory in a water closet while a powder room is also known as a half bath or guest bath. It also has two of the four main components that a bathroom should have, which is typically a toilet and a sink. Show kitchen versus the dirty kitchen. A show kitchen is a kitchen for special purposes or where cooking involves light works. Dito mo makikita yung mga magagandang appliances, yung mga gandang plato, yung mga gandang baso, yung mga gandang cubiertos na nilalabas lang pag may bisita. While the dirty kitchen, a part in a Filipino house where everyday cooking is done. So, dito usually nagliluto, dito usually nagigrill, dito usually gumagamit ng uling or kahoy sa napanluto. So, it's a dirty kitchen. That's why it's called a dirty kitchen. Living room. The living room is the most spacious room of the house and is usually at the heart of the house occupying the front portion. It's also known as the front room. So dito, pwedeng maging entertainment area, pwede kang manood and this is also the part where you can entertain your guests. It's an active space. The dining room. The dining room is the space where the family sits together to have a meal and where guests are also entertained. It's also an active space. The kitchen, a room or part of a room used for cooking and food preparation. The busiest part of the room kasi dito ka magluluto sa umaga, tanghali, sa gabi, at dito ka rin maghuhugas or you do the dishes here. So, it's the busiest part of the house. Must be well oriented for sanitation purposes as much as possible oriented to the afternoon sun. The sink 
is a wet part so it's prone to germs and bacteria and molds build up. It also must follow the work triangle. It's an active space. This is the work triangle that features the stove, the sink, and the fridge. The bedroom. A personal or private place for sleeping and other activities for personal care. So this is a passive space and a very private space for me time and other personal matters. The master's bedroom. A principal bedroom in a house usually the largest. A passive space. Walk-in closet. The term for a dressing room. Also a place for the clothes rocks and cabinets and accessories. Also a passive space. Special areas include the game room, the study area, bar area, entertainment or home theater, the gym, and other special type not typical to a basic resident. The service area or the yard supplements the living and sleeping areas of the house. It also supplies equipment and space for maintenance, storage, and service. The service area also serves as the laundry area, the grilling area, the drying yard, Pwede kang magsampay dito ng mga damit. And also, you can do other... It's a multi-purpose yard. An open space. Active space. Code. Refers to the National Building Code of the Philippines. What are the exemptions of this code? Traditional Indigenous Family Dwelling. Uh, using this code, the term Traditional Indigenous Family Dwelling means a dwelling intended for the use of occupancy by the family of the owner home with a native material such as bamboo, nita, log, or lumber, the total cost of which is not exceed 15,000 pesos. Public building and BP220 project. Size and dimension of rooms. Rooms for human habitations must be 6 square meters with a least dimension of 2 meters. Kitchens, minimum of 3 square meters with a leaf dimension of 1.5. Toilet and bath, a minimum of 1.20 square meters with a leaf dimension of 0.9 meters. The section 805, 807, 808 of the MDP discusses ceiling height. Habitable room provided with artificial ventilation shall have ceiling heights not less than 2.4 meters measured from the floor to the ceiling, provided that for buildings of more than one story, the minimum height of the first story shall be 2.7 meters, and that for the second story, 2.4 meters, and the succeeding story shall have an unobstructed typical headroom clearance of not less than 2.10 meters above the finished floor line. Above stated rooms with natural ventilation shall have a ceiling height of not less than 2.7 meters. Mezzanine floor shall have a clear ceiling height not less than 1.8 meters above and below it. Airspace requirement for habitable room is 14 cubic meters of airspace per person, and rooms of any use not provided with artificial ventilation, window openings shall be 10% of total floor area provided that such openings shall not be less than 1 square meter. Carport planning consideration. Car dimension should be considered. Methods of parking and turning radius should also be considered. Minimum clearances should also be considered, especially when the car door is open.